Good morning. Welcome to the worship service, virtual worship service, for First Presbyterian Church, Greensburg, Indiana. We are uh, foregoing our in-person worship services through the month of September. So for the next few weeks, uh, we will continue in, in this vein. Uh, glad you're with us. Please join me in the call to worship. As Christ was offered in obedience to you, O God, so we offer ourselves and our gifts. As you filled Christ with life and power, transform us to be living bread in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that our hearts and minds may be opened. Amen. The scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Listen for God's word to you. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Friends, the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. If we take just a moment and think back to last week's scripture story about Joseph reuniting with his brothers in Egypt, we notice something that contrasts in an interesting way with today's story about Jesus. Joseph was gracious. We might have expected that he would take the opportunity to get revenge on his brothers for selling him into slavery. Uh, but instead, Joseph kissed all his brothers 
and wept upon them. He forgave. So in the Old Testament, in a story that began with betrayal, we expect revenge, but we find grace. Now today, we hear a story about someone asking Jesus for help. And we expect Jesus will help her and her daughter. After all, Jesus loves people. Jesus goes around healing. Yet here, he, play, he, he behaves rudely toward the needy Canaanite mother. First, he ignores her pleas, and then he insults her by calling her a dog. We might have expected that from Joseph, but we would never expect Jesus to turn his back on somebody in need. Jesus' behavior is disturbing. His behavior toward the Canaanite mother shocks us. We understand he was human, but we like to think he was perfectly human, a man without sin. So this story is troubling. And preachers and commentators over the years have come up with all kinds of excuses for Jesus' behavior. You've probably heard them all, so I won't bore you with them. Let's just accept the reality that in this story, that in this story, Matthew and Mark portray Jesus as a besieged healer who learns from a persistent pagan mother that his ministry is not just to Jews, but also to Gentiles. Jesus discovers that his mission is not just for a particular segment of society. No one in the world is to be excluded. Now, we sense this mother's desperation. She has a severely disturbed child, and we can easily sympathize with her. Most, most of us have had loved ones or friends affected with some incurable or life-threatening disease or accident. We know that hopeless feeling, the panicked desperation. And it's that desperation that makes people reach out for help to anyone. I am deeply moved by Rembrandt's drawing, the Canaanite woman. The mother is standing behind Jesus and his disciples. She's not part of the group. One of the disciples seems to be telling her to beat it. Jesus and his disciples all seem to be ignoring her. And they act, the disciples, act like the secret service crowding around Jesus. And, and surrounding him uh, from annoyances such as screaming pagan women. She stands there, her mouth wide open, hands raised, pleading to Jesus for her child. She's screaming, Lord, help my child. We know her gut-wrenching agony. So like her, we feel like We've been hit in the gut when Jesus says to her, stop annoying me. My compassion is food for the Jews. It's not meant for pagan dogs like you. And we understand the desperation that empowers her to fire right back at him. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And then this remarkable thing happens. Jesus changes his mind. He recognizes truth when he hears it. This Gentile woman is part of a, a much larger flock than the one he thought he had been sent to. He says to the woman, Lady, you have astounding faith. So God has healed your daughter. And the woman and all of us breathe a sigh of relief. Jesus has become who Jesus is supposed to be. And he's doing what we expect him to do. And so when I ask, what would the Canaanite woman do? I get interesting answers. When all that's 
going on in the world right now threatens to overwhelm me. I ask, what would that Canaanite woman do? This season of wicked problems, of too many occasions where it feels like Jesus does not acknowledge the cries of the suffering, and of many of us showing our stress through anger toward others, you know, this Canaanite woman seems like such a refreshing, good role model in the faith. The saint whose wisdom renews us. I need to call upon her tenacity, her persistence, her resilience, her humility and strength, her commitment to seek out help on behalf of someone unable to seek it out for herself. I remember her unwillingness to be dismissed, even by God. What would the Canaanite woman do about crushing student de debt, about mass incarceration? What would the Canaanite woman do in the face of black families having one-tenth the median net worth that white families have. This woman begs Jesus for help, and he responds with silence. She persists. She keeps following and shouting to the point that the disciples urge Jesus to send her away. And Jesus turns to her and tells her that she and her daughter are not his concern. He has come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Still she persists, taking the insult, flipping the script, and telling the Messiah of Israel she will settle for his cast-offs, less than the leftovers, the crumbs that fall from the table. Will he say no to that? No, he can't. And right now, the Canaanite woman's resolve to get Jesus to intervene speaks so loudly to me. We need her kind of resolve in this season, uh, season of racial reckoning and pandemic devastation. What would the Canaanite woman do about families with no health insurance? What would the Canaanite do about all the children lost to gun violence? What would the Canaanite woman do about the impending eviction crisis? She would be persistent in pleading the cause of another. And so we should be persistent in our faith that God will bring in the kingdom in its fullness and will rule with justice. And in the meantime, we advocate to God. We advocate to all on behalf of those who were on the margins, those who would be cast aside like her. So we persist. I wonder, when have we kept silent? When have we tried to silence others in the face of systems, structures, and policies that have allowed evil to run rampant and destroy lives? But what would the Canaanite woman do? The Joseph story was directed at the Jewish community. This is the way you are to behave in the world. Forgive those who have hurt you. The story of the Canaanite woman is directed at the church. This is the way you are to behave in the world. Exclude no one. Be compassionate toward everyone. Amen. God, strengthen our resistance when evil beckons to us that we may live in your kingdom of justice and compassion. Amen. Would you please join me in prayer? 
O God, we study that great witness to you, the witness of your people over thousands of years. And we read where two or three are gathered. Today, at this moment, many will gather virtually, joined by your Holy Spirit in bonds of love wherever they are. Many will gather no closer than six feet. The Bible reports they were all gathered together. We long to be gathered together again in one place, and yet out of love and compassion. We do not do that yet, for we do not know when that day will be. And yet we long for that day, and we hold that day dear to our hearts. Triune God, three in one. You are one, and yet three. You are mystery, existing forever in relationships. In this time of isolation, we ask you to draw us closer to this mystery. May the mystery of Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer remind us that even in physical isolation, we are never really alone because your love binds us together, links us together, making us a people. We belong to each other because you have made us this way. We belong to you, even now, especially now. Amen. Now we come to a time of offering. If you are financially able, you can keep your offerings current during this pandemic by mailing them to the church at 202 North Franklin Street, Greensburg, Indiana, 47240, or by dropping them off in the mail slot at the entrance on Washington Street. Now let us dedicate these offerings. For the blessings of this and all our days, we thank you, gracious God. Accept, we pray, not just this money, but also our lives freely offered in gratitude for all you have done for us. Through Jesus' name, amen.
and now may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Sustainer be with you now and always. Amen.